Welcome to Frequency Recap, your go-to place for deep dives into some of the most brilliant TV shows out there. Today, we're talking about a show that changed the game for political drama, House of Cards Season 1. It's packed with manipulation, power plays, and one of the most cunning characters ever, Frank Underwood. In this video, I'll break down Frank's genius, the political themes that drive the story, and some of the best moments that make season one unforgettable. Make sure you stick around until the end and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is Frank Underwood a mastermind or a villain? I'd love to hear your take. There are two kinds of pain. The sort of pain that makes you strong or useless pain. The sort of pain that's only suffering. I have no patience for useless things. What? Moments like this require someone who will act, will do the unpleasant thing, the necessary thing. There. No more pain. Let's start with a quick overview. Season 1 follows Frank Underwood, a ruthless and ambitious politician who feels betrayed after being passed over for the position of Secretary of State. Instead of taking the setback quietly, Frank and his equally calculating wife Claire begin a dangerous game of political chess. Their ultimate goal? The White House. We meet other key players along the way. Zoe Barnes, a hungry journalist willing to do anything for a story. Peter Russo, a troubled congressman caught in Frank's web of manipulation. And Claire Underwood, who is every bit as cunning and driven as Frank. Together, they form a network of lies, power struggles, and backstabbing that keeps you hooked from the very first episode. What will we leave behind? We've accomplished a great deal, and I intend for us to accomplish a lot more. But for whom? For each other. But if we're not... There is no solace above or below. Only us, small, solitary, striving, battling one another. I pray to myself, for myself. One of the reasons House of Cards stands out is how it handles themes of power and corruption. Frank Underwood isn't just playing the political game, he's rewriting the rules. From the very beginning, he's clear about one thing. The road to power is paved with hypocrisy and casualties. And we see that play out throughout the season. Frank's ability to manipulate those around him is a masterclass in psychological warfare. He builds people up, like Peter Russo, only to tear them down when it serves his agenda. In one scene, he offers Peter hope, only to later use Peter's weaknesses to completely destroy him. It's brutal, but it shows the dark side of ambition in politics. But it's not just Frank. Claire is just as cold and calculating. Together, they show that in the world of politics, loyalty is an illusion, and everyone is a pawn in a much larger game. What makes them so dangerous is that they don't just want power. They want complete control. the office on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. One heartbeat away from the presidency, not a single vote cast in my name. Democracy is so overrated. Let's start this new chapter with a clean slate. I know you'll do whatever you think is best. Let's talk about the characters. Frank Underwood is a force of nature. He breaks the fourth wall, speaking directly to us, the audience, as if we're his co-conspirators. This gives us an inside look at his manipulative mind, making us feel like we're part of the game. Every word, every move, is carefully calculated. Claire Underwood is equally impressive. While Frank is out there playing chess with the world, Claire is quietly building her own empire through her non-profit work. But make no mistake, she's not in the background. Claire's ambition is as sharp as Frank's, and her ability to manipulate is often even more subtle. Then there's Zoe Barnes, a young journalist hungry for success. She's clever and ambitious, but ultimately, she underestimates Frank. Their relationship is one of manipulation, and Frank uses her just like he uses everyone else. 
It's a stark reminder that in House of Cards, no one is untouchable. Peter Russo, on the other hand, is the tragic figure of season one. Frank builds him up, gives him false hope, and then orchestrates his downfall in one of the most devastating arcs of the season. Peter's story highlights the human cost of Frank's ambition. Am I really the sort of enemy you want to make? Can you blame me if I find it difficult to trust you right now? You are out of line, Frank. There is but one rule. Hunt or be hunted. Welcome back. Every time I've spoken to you, you've never spoken back. Although given our mutual disdain, I can't blame you for the silent treatment. Perhaps I'm speaking to the wrong audience. Can you hear me? Now, let's break down some of the best moments from season one. Frank's first monologue. Right from the start, Frank breaks the fourth wall, letting us in on his plans. His first line, I love that woman. I love her more than sharks love blood, perfectly sets the tone for the rest of the series. It's dark, it's sharp, and it shows us that Frank is someone who's not afraid to get his hands dirty. The fall of Peter Russo. One of the most gut-wrenching moments is when Frank manipulates Peter into running for governor, knowing full well that he's setting him up for failure. When Frank ultimately orchestrates Peter's death, it's a turning point in the show. It's the moment we realize just how far Frank is willing to go to achieve his goals. Claire's decision. Claire's choice to sabotage her own nonprofit's mission shows that she's not just Frank's shadow. She's making moves of her own, and she's just as ruthless as her husband. Your absolute, unquestioning loyalty. Anything. We're in a very gray area, ethically, legally, which I'm okay with. President of the United States, that I will faithfully execute the office of the Power is a lot like real estate. It's all about location, location, location. The closer you are to the source, the higher your property value. Centuries from now, when people watch this footage, who will they see smiling just at the edge of the frame? So help me God. Congratulations. This is going to be a big year for us. This is the memo I've drafted on our Middle East policy we've been developing. I'd like to coin the phrase trickle-down diplomacy. That Frank, way... we are not nominating you for Secretary of State. I know he made you a promise, but circumstances have changed. The nature of promises, Linda, is that they remain immune to changing circumstances. I know you should. Barnes of the Washington Herald boarding a source close to the president. I'm not exactly sure how it got leaked. I want it over. I'm sorry, Mr. President, but I will not do that. Get ready, Kathy. Things are about to move very quickly. Okay. I'm ready. Do you understand how you're to behave? And if I don't play along? We'll cleave you from the herd and watch you die in the wilderness. House of Cards Season 1 is a brilliant exploration of power, corruption, and the lengths people will go to for control. Frank Underwood's character is the driving force of the series, but it's the supporting cast and the intricate plot that make it unforgettable. If you love political dramas that challenge you to think and keep you on the edge of your seat, House of Cards is a must-watch. So, what do you think? Is Frank Underwood a genius, or is he just plain evil? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more deep dives like this on Frequency Recap. Thanks for watching. You only understand depravity. Stop hiding in my thoughts. Come out. Have the courage and death that you never had in life. Come out. Look me in the eye and say what you need to say.